Okay, so we're just giving people a little time to come in. Uh, make sure that you are smashing that notification bell. You can also share this live if you like or tag a few people that you think this would be good for. And don't be shy because this is a place to discuss things. You don't have to be a veteran to really have input because we I learn from people every day in the lives and in life. So uh, this is not a place where if you're not seasoned, you can't speak up. This is a place to kind of get the discussion going, to kind of get the mind brewing so we can all make money in the beauty industry, okay? And you can invite people or share with people who may not necessarily be nail techs because this is anyone in the beauty industry or for an entrepreneur overall. So just sit back and we'll come on soon. Thanks for your support. This track is so funny to me. I just had to throw it in because the emotions be running high, honey. But I'm coming soon. Just hold on. Just giving people time to come on in. Get what you need to get. We're starting soon. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing today? Oh, my God. I'm still trying to get this lighting together. It's a mess. I'm, I'm such a little liar. What about right there? Right there? Oh, my God. When I tell you, I, I swear to God, I have new lighting. If I could show you, I have a new lighting system <laughs> right there on the floor. I thought it would be so easy to put together, and it's not. And I watched like three videos and I, I'm like, this is not that easy. So I, I, when I get myself together, then I will, I promise you, I'm going to put that lighting system together because I have two ring lights and it's just off with this green screen because you need really three point lighting all the way around. So that's what throws it off. This family thing is not easy like everybody thinks. It's a lot of work. So how is everyone doing tonight? See, look, this is funny because Lauren... Let me tell you all something. Lauren had the eyeballs up here at 6.53. And this live started. She was here a whole hour and seven minutes early with the eyeballs. <laughs> and then T Tangina, hi, you're new. Hey, Tangina. Tangina was here too at 7.30, like with double eyeballs. Looking like, what's going on? <laughs> I saw y'all. And then Lauren came back at 8 o'clock with the triple eyeballs. 
<laughs> See, I, I guess I need to sit back. That's funny, but I need to be able to reach and do like this. So I don't know. But um, I'm so glad that you all are liking the channel and where it's going because it has grown. It's been like two years and it's really, it's really turning into its own thing. I'll let you all gather and tell me what you all want. So thank you so much. Hey, Lauren, your package is on the way. And people, did you see people were commenting saying you did such a good job last week? So you did. I think you did. So thank you so much, Lauren. Mind of mine said, hey, everyone, the video will start shortly. she be on it. Mind of mine, you be on it. You be on it. Oh, I always come on here and I get nervous, believe it or not, because I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And every time we end up being on here for like two hours, crazy. Keeping Nettie. Hey, how you doing? Nails by LS13. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> hey, Amy, how are you? Let's see. Let's see. Tan Nails. Hello, ladies. You're new too. And then we have this mixtape. Three, which is an up and coming, um, I'm gonna say up and coming star in the group. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, I saw you with those abs. I'm like, why is Lauren here? It's so funny because when you were there with the abs, I'm like, I'm laid out on the couch, wig thrown across the room. I'm like, oh, I guess I should get up and start getting ready because I have to set all this stuff up and get myself ready. And I'm like, she already here with the abs, so I guess that's my cue. Hmm. <laughs> right. Right. Did you see those eyeballs? Like they were, those eyeballs started an hour before. Man. Buff 3D nails. I'm so glad you started coming back. See, I noticed what's going on because you keep disappearing. Okay. You think I don't notice. I know what's going on. Hey ladies, I'm so excited to see you, Miss Chicago. I'm excited to see you. You see, I noticed that you have been kind of in my head a little bit. <sighs> she said, thanks y'all. No problem. Yay. So I had a couple different titles. Look, and I don't know which one you all saw for today's topic, but I do have a big announcement, but we're going to talk about this real quick first. What did you all see for today's topic? Because I got a question. Let me type the question because I want to make sure and be clear for people who come in late um that you know what we're talking about I sound like Medea don't this type of <laughs> uh this is the question if anybody would like to come on screen just let me know I can bring you on screen so this is the question, depending on where you came in from this, I don't know what, what you saw because it was like I changed it and it doesn't always update. So this is the question here. Okay. Who in the hell told Neil Tex to start doing this? You're like, what is she talking about? And you said, is your bag light? Right. Is it bad? Oh, bag. Okay, bag light. That's what it originally was. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's part of it. But really, the question is, once I started thinking about this, was who told Nail Techs to start doing this? And it might be some of you all. And again, you all do exactly what you want to do because you're grown or whatever. But I just want to talk about this. And um, 3D Buff says she's been working like crazy doing clients, but you put your notifications on. Yeah, but see, I noticed. I noticed that you wasn't here because I be seeing what's going on. Chrissy didn't even know last week I recorded her graduation and was ready to play it for everybody. <laughs> I, I see. But I'm glad you're here now. Is your bag light? Who told Neil Tex to start doing this? Now, this was brought on by a consultation that I did. And, I'm, you know, we're going through things but in one of the pieces of advice I had to give her, I was like, you know what? I need to talk about this with everyone because it's something I've been seeing, but I never mentioned. I'm trying to figure out who told Nail Techs to start this trend where you all are basically selling wholesale, wholesale sets. You know what I'm talking about? 
wholesale sets, meaning um, like you do a cluster. Let's just see. Let me see if I can pull up a picture real quick. Like you do a cluster, a, a whole set of nails, but it has some type of theme to it and you just like price it one way. So I'm going to see if I can pull up one. I don't know. I took down a lot of the pictures. Like they'll say something like, oh, ombre sets, ombre sets with four bling nails for $60 this week. And then they'll keep posting pictures, different variations of that, different pictures. And it'll be like a set price where it's like $60, $60, $55, $60. And so it'll say something like, and then these long nails, you know, everybody's getting these long, long, long sets. So I'm seeing people say stuff like marble nails, marble sets, marble sets going for $75. DM me for more, you know, to, to book. I just want to know because maybe you all can enlighten me because it, it makes me it makes me want to go every time I see that a little bit. And I'm just maybe I'm wrong because I'm, I'm you know, I learn something new every day. So can you all just kind of chime in and tell tell me where did this come from and how do you all feel about that? Like, what is the rationale behind to me is wholesaling your talent. So can anyone just tell me? Have to take a sip for that one because Buff 3D Nail said I've seen that. Why, why, why are we doing that? One of the re one of the things, one of the reasons why I want to say this is because I'm seeing people get burned out, and a lot of you all are so, 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 so talented. Y'all do nails way better than me. But the funny thing is, when I look at some of you all's prices for what you're giving people, I'm like, I wouldn't, I you. I get $30 more for that. So I don't understand why these great, talented nail techs are feeling the need to put all of this stuff on wholesale. You're giving them wholesale pricing. You're giving one client a wholesale price. Wholesale pricing is given when somebody is buying a bulk amount of something. Then they get a cut on the rate. But I don't understand why nail techs feel the need to be giving out wholesale pricing on stuff. You said, I think it's new techs trying to gain clients. Okay, we're going to talk about that because I, I agree. You said, I've heard of this like a look of the month. I've seen another channel suggest that as a go to, that as go to sets. Yeah. Now, I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this because I have another insight on it. But ooh, by the way, something was on my screen. You know, I'm just trying to understand it. You said, well, my guess is that most of them are beginner, unlicensed, hmm, self-taught, nothing wrong with that. We all got to start somewhere. And they start charging cheap prices just to get the hands. Mm -hmm. Hey, Emmy, you're new. Emmy E, I'm in the area where I have to keep with the agents all around me and people here are cheap. Mm -hmm. These are all the things I'm thinking that people are thinking. But I say, mm-mm. No, why? Why are you wholesaling? You, 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 you came into this industry to be a wholesaler. Let me tell you, when I was talking to this one person that brought it back on my mind the other day, this person is great. Hey, Phoenix Nails, um, they are really good at their work, and they're doing. I saw a lot of long sets, and I see a lot of people doing these long sets. It'll be like marble with three different colors. It'll be like a, a partial bling nails. Uh, I don't know, some encapsulation with hearts and stars all in there. And it'll be like, how much did you charge them? 75? 75? But let me tell you something. Me, for that same set, and most of you all, if you really sat and thought about why you're doing that, a long set alone, alone, even if it's square, should be $70. Just the set. So it's crazy because... This is how this is why I say that it's not about how good you are. It's just it's just like what you know about running a business. You could be the best nail tech in the world, but you could be really running yourself into the ground. And this person was saying, I'm starting to kind of hate to do it sometimes because they're burning themselves out because you charge 75 for me that long set alone. And for most nail techs who understand anybody in the business, if you understand how your time breaks out, you should be at 70 dollars alone just on the set, just them sitting in the chair. 
And then when you start doing encapsulated work, what you forget is that you are taking a basic set of nails and you, instead of just laying that acrylic, bam, 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 and you just buffing it all out. When you start going into specialty work, you are literally going over their nails two to three times because marble, you have to go in, lay that marble and you have to be kind of meticulous. You can't just slap marble down. You have to take time and concentrate on how you are. You got to be strategic in how you do marble. Then once you're done, you still got to go back over and, encap and encapsulate it and give it some strength and give it some strength. So that alone, you, you should already be at like close to 100 when you start doing this type of specialty work. So I'm trying to understand what is the rationale behind people who told, who told, who's telling nail techs to do this, wholesaling their work. Because literally what you are doing is you are... <clears throat> You're you're running, you're burning the candle at both ends, okay? Yeah, you're getting people, but what type of people are you getting? This is what I keep saying. We gotta believe in ourselves. Some of you all are so talented, there is no need to even do that. And what you're doing is you're 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 thinking you're you're busy. Yeah, you're busy running yourself into the ground, you're busy making yourself annoyed with this, you're busy burning yourself out, and you are busy attracting cheap people. I'm not gonna say cheap people. You're busy attracting people within a certain box. There's so many. And I want you to go back and replay this again because you all got to understand that you got to charge for your craftsmanship. You are attracting people who will stay within this box with you. OK, it's no different from running a sale when you start clustering your prices and giving all this, all these designs, and all this specialty work at these flat rates. When you do that, you will attract people. But that's all you're going to get are those type of people. And then they're going to bring more people because people are going to want to see it because you just did the most on their nails. And then they're going to say, oh, yeah, she always do sets. Like she charged like 60, 70, 80. They ain't gonna, I don't even see 80. I'm always seeing 60. I'm seeing 50, 65, and 70. No more than $75 on these type of wholesale sets. And that's what they're going to tell people. Oh, she charged anywhere from 55 to 75, depending. You know, you just got to go look at her Instagram. So now what is that doing? That's attracting those people. So what you have done is put yourself right back in a box. Okay. Think about it. I want you all to think about that for one second, because I got a couple of different things I want to say about this. I'm just trying to figure out. Just think about that. Tan Nail said, absolutely. Facts. Buff 3D said, yes, 70 plus. And accent nails with me are anywhere from 3 to $10 per nail. Hello. 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 Gonna draw the wrong crowd in like that. Right. You said, no, nah, cheap is the right word. Look, I ain't say it. She said, I ain't say it. <laughs> but think about it. When you do that, you are putting yourself in a box. How can you ever give yourself a raise? If you keep putting yourself out there, your brand out there, whereas you offer all these things in a bundle package, if you bring in people constantly who expect to pick from your bundle packages, you will never be able to get them into an a la carte menu, okay? You will never be able to get them into an a la carte menu. You never will. It's going to be so hard because they are used to your wholesale pricing. And that is, to me, a no-no for nail techs. Because just like the young lady I was talking to the other day, she's burning out. And she's new and she's getting burnt out. So if you want to stay busy just to feel busy, you can do that. But I, like we said before, you're going to burn out or your body going to start breaking down. And also, you run it through product like crazy. And you run it through your time like crazy because those type of sets take so much time. And here's another angle. Time. If you sit there and you're doing these long, what they what the girl tell me, they said they call them now no cut sets. So basically you're putting on a long tip and they just wearing them square now with all this marbling and all this custom work with custom acrylic and all this. That takes time. So people, let's be honest with ourselves. I know for a fact, just because I keep asking people, people are taking up to three hours with a set. Are you really making money? 
Are you really making money like you think? If you're taking three, three and a half hours to do these extravagant sets for people for $65 and $70, let's just take, let's just take $75. Let's just go up to the highest number I'm seeing. $75 divided by three, because it's taking people three hours for real to do these type of sets. You're at $25. Oh, well, $25 is not bad. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you'll be making much more, but let's keep going with that because you just spent how much on materials? You know? And let's not let's not even talk about if you are on commission, you got to give up a piece of that. Let's not talk about if you're paying booth rent, you got to cover that too. So are you really making what you think you're making? You could say, oh, it's $25 an hour if I did that. Yeah, it's more like, it's more like six, 18 with the booth rent, $16 an hour. You know, I know, I think it's in Illinois, they just raised a minimum wage to 15. So you got to really sit and break down and think about what you're doing. If you're good, don't wholesale your services. You should have a base price and you should have everything a la carte and let people pick and choose. They can look at your page and figure out what they like and you all could come up with something kind of custom according to their what? Somebody give me the word. Somebody give me the word, honey, because y'all know, y'all know what I always say. What is your... Oh, somebody already know. Budget. Exactly. You need to know what is your budget. You let people pick. Right. Multifaceted, no. Pick according to their budget. Y'all, what y'all doing is you're giving up so much. It's like being in a bad relationship with somebody who's just taking advantage of the situation because you're just so nice. You're just so giving. And they love you at first. But then after a while, those same people start to abuse you. Because then it's never enough. Here's the other thing. When you start giving people too much for too little, they don't appreciate it after so long. They expect it. They become in, in, entitled to it. That's another reason why you shouldn't be giving that much to people for so little money. I'm going to tell you something. If the Asian salons did all the work we did, they would not be charging that low amount. I promise you, because I know some that do it here in Chicago. And there's been times I haven't been able to get to my clients. And I know one client, she found an Asian guy who did it. But she didn't pay him just as much or a little bit more. And the nails weren't even sharp or crisp in the shape or anything. But you could tell he tried to, he learned some stuff and bought some stuff and he did what he could. It looked decent, but I knew, I knew. And when I asked her, she, she had paid like $75, $75. And it was a fill-in with the designs. So why do you all, somebody said earlier, I feel like I need to compete with the discount salons in my area because people here are cheap. Everybody is not broke. OK, and that's why I have to I, I always have to say I feel like I'm going to repeat myself over and over and over again. I'm sorry, but it's just coming from different angles because I'm repeating myself because everything I say points back to the same thing. Everybody is not broke. It depends on who you're targeting. Everybody is not broke. A lot of us grew up in in, in poverty or we grew up around people that scratching and surviving all the time. So that's we think everybody is like that. And that is not the case. And once you get into this field, that's why I don't want new nail techs going and working in a house because you're not going to get enough experience and you're going to have a closed off mindset of how this business truly works if you apply yourself. Because if you get out there, you will learn that it's people out here with money. I don't give a crap where you live. You got to do the work to go and track those people down. You have to set yourself up to attract those people. You know, like they're there. So if you're not attracting them, you have to go back and maybe rebrand yourself or brand yourself. Have you even done that in the first place? You know, are you putting out the type of work that those people want to to spend money with? You have to look back to you have to look to at who is in your area and you have to pay attention to what they like. How do you do that? If you live in an area that you think is cheap or whatever, or you think is broke, you have to look. Even in the country, there's always a country club. There's always a salon that these ladies are going to. Go to their page and figure out the style that those women are getting. You have to figure out those things. And then if you want to, once you found them or found out that style, you need to cater yourself to kind of fit that. See, a lot of us are not putting in the work. It's just easy to say, oh, and people here broke, people don't have no money. No, that's the, that's that. It's always money everywhere, everywhere. And you know what else? I don't really want to hear that because women spend money, even if when it, when it comes to beauty, shoes, 
and makeup and stuff and purses and weave and nails and all that. They spend it even if they don't have it. Okay? When a, a woman can have her rent due and need a filly in or need her hair done. She's going to borrow the money and will pay her rent late. Okay? So that's really not even the case. That's what you're telling yourself. That's what you're telling yourself instead of sitting down and really drilling down into what needs to be done. You get what I'm saying? So, hold on. I think that price is decent if you want someone to model or help you get your name out there. Yeah, but I see some nail techs, that's pretty much how they are setting up their brand. And what they're doing is they're they're putting a cap on it. And I'm, I got another part to this too, because they're putting a cap on how much they're making. Because that you, you, you basically setting up your business to attract people and that's what they're going to be used to. You can't just switch up after the first year and say, Oh, I don't no longer do that. It's, it's $70 just for the set. You can't go from $70, $75 for a full set with marble nails and chrome and stones and all that. And then the next year, switch up and say, oh, no, this is my pricing. It starts at $45 for short, long as $75 just for the set. You're going to lose those people. You cannot. It's too big of a jump. You have the wrong people in your chair. It's going to be a shock to their system and a shock to their wallet. Because they have got accustomed to, then you can't do that. Think about it. You cannot do that. You can't say, I'm going to give you all. That's like going to McDonald's. Y'all know how long we've been going to McDonald's. Now, I just want you all to think about this. How long have we all been going to McDonald's? Forever and a day, right? We know when we go to McDonald's, what are we getting if we order a burger? A burger or a cheeseburger, don't matter. When we order a burger or a cheeseburger, what do we know is coming on there? They're going to put those little shriveled up onion sliced thingies and they're going to give us some what? Some ketchup. And don't they put mustard in there or is it just ketchup? We're going to say they put ketchup and mustard. I don't know. I don't really eat McDonald's. But I'm saying that's what you expect when you go to McDonald's. And when you want to spend some type of money, you want to get something fast and quick, you go to McDonald's because you know exactly what you're going to get and pretty much how much you're going to have to spend. Right? Now, what if you went to McDonald's and, and, and all of a sudden... McDonald's changed everything. So now when you go to McDonald's, <laughs> you got to pay for the ketchup packets. It only come with the meat and the bun. So if you want cheese, now they charge you extra for cheese. If you want ketchup and mustard, now that's an extra 50 cent charge. Okay. And then if you get fries, they don't put the salt on the fries anymore. They don't put the salt on the fries anymore. You can buy salt packets though for an extra 50 cent. So what if they started charging for every little thing, every little packet, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. A lot of people would be like, oh, hell no, because why? Because you've been going to McDonald's forever and your brain is programmed to expect those things. It's already part of the sandwich. It's the same thing. Now, let's go on the other hand of things, the other side of things. Now, most people have a Hooters in their area, right? In a Hoot oh, I'm, they have a Hooters in the area. I'm not going to read the comments. Yet. I'm going to finish this out. Think about Hooters on the other hand. Hooters is the exact opposite, and they have been the exact opposite since they started their brand and started advertising to customers. When you go to Hooters, you can order wings all you want, but if you get a ranch or blue cheese you're getting what charged you get charged okay now you go to applebee's or something like that and you order some buffalo wings they're going to give you the ranch or blue cheese but if you go to hooters they came in the door saying look we know our stuff is good we got a whole little thing going on with the little naked girls and stuff walking around and if you want our wings you get the wings but everything that go with the wing you got to pay for I think they give you free celery. I don't know. And after COVID, they probably will start charging for the celery too. You get what I'm saying? Are you going to go with this side or are you going to go with that side? Okay? Because people have money for whatever they want to have money for. The same people that shop and go to McDonald's, go to McDonald's expecting this, depending on what they want. But those same people also have money for Hooters when they have the taste for Hooters. If they want Hooters and they know how the blue cheese tastes, the ranch tastes with it to finish out that flavor that they're craving, they go over and they pay that 50 cent. 
And then if they take some home, they'll order extra blue cheese or ranch. And when you get your bill, all those little extra charges are on there down to the penny. That waitress is constantly, ding, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. Which one you want to be? You want to be modeled this way? You want to be modeled that way? Because you'd be surprised to say that people don't have it. I, I The same people eating McDonald's, eating Hooters. I just want to get that across. That's just an example. It just popped in my head. So, um, yep, they feel like you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're going to argue us down to pay. Hi, Artina. Hi. Yes, you've been gone too, girl. I noticed that too. Okay, y'all, come on in. Hello. You say I'm in school now and I'm hearing my instructors talk. Wait, I'm school. I'm going to say I'm in school now and hearing my instructors talk is changing my perspective already. Okay, cool. Oh, I didn't even see the end. I was concentrating on that one line. Okay. So I just want to make sure that I'm I'm clarifying what I'm saying, gotta say. And I have one more thing to say about that too. Ian. Okay. Stop counting those people money. That's their job. And if you're too expensive for them, so be it. I send my price list and go from there. My prices are my prices. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you all, I see people give so much, these long, long, long sets. Those should be $100 <laughs> minimum. You're doing somebody nails that long? Hmm. Hmm. Let me tell you something. The girl I was talking to the other day, she got quiet because I started pointing out pictures during her consultation and her work. And I told her how, how much I would charge for her work. And she got quiet because she was like, dang, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, that's how much you should be getting paid. Yes. Then how long did it take? She's like, yeah. So she's revamping everything because I had to tell her, like, this is what you should be charging. And she's like, yeah, because I'm really getting burnt out. And she's so new to be burnt out. They will burn you out. On top of all the things you have to go through with people showing up late and not following the rules and trying to play little games. On top of that, if you're overworking yourself, you will start to hate it. <laughs> okay. You said, yes, folks will sit in my chair and complain about bills. I just keep paying. I already said that. I already said that, that people will sit in front of your chair getting expensive nails and talk about they don't have any money. But if you listen to those same people, they will tell you about the trip that they're going on in October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a trip they just got back from. <laughs> they ain't that broke. They are not that broke. People do that on just to play on your sympathy just ignore it <laughs> and charge true hi hey precious me yeah precious me is starting to come back around i thought i scared precious me off a long time ago but she's coming back around hey precious me you are so right i'm just telling you all a lot of people will stop going to mcdonald's if they started charging for every little thing now hooters you expect to do it so you, how are you going to set yourself up? We should be setting ourselves up like Hooters and not like McDonald's. You know, like, why, why are we doing that? There is no need to do that. What you're doing is wholesaling for no reason. Yeah. You could even ask for lettuce and all type of stuff at McDonald's. And they'll just throw it in. It's, it's, it's included with the cost of the burger. Meal tech should not be doing that. Why are you all doing that? Unless it could be somebody watching this video. I'm seeing that's a trend now. That's a trend. Now, I can see if you're new and you're just trying to start out things. Let me let me put a little disclaimer in because somebody might come under the, under the comments and say, no, but okay, this quiet. If you are new and you just want to try out a little bit of everything and get your feet wet or whatever and get your speed up or something like that, you can do it. But if you always do that, that's what you're going to always get, those people that's looking for the McDonald's drive through version. The combo meal. you selling combo meals. <laughs> Not everyone is a model. You have to be selective and, and let them know it's one time. Yeah, just be careful with that. It's not necessarily a bad idea, but I see people like they've gotten into this whole thing. You look up and down their page, and it's like, that's all they're doing is offering these combo meals. Bad idea in the long run. It's a bad idea in the long run. I got one more thing to say, but I'm just reading through these comments. Oh, my God. Precious me says she never been to Hooters. Go to Hooters and, and, and watch your bill because that waitress will walk over and go, okay, okay, okay. 
And then when you get that bill, it's going to be a charge for every little thing you ask for. I'm telling you. <laughs> they charge for everything. Hello. What did you miss? Well, I'm asking nail techs. Who, who told nail techs to start doing this? Wholesaling. Wholesaling full sets. Wholesale full sets. They're bundling up all this specialty work into one low price. And I don't understand. I just didn't. I just, maybe y'all could tell me something that I didn't think about, but nobody. It's all, you all are answering me. I'm not saying you, this is what you do, but you, the answers you came up with were the thoughts I came up with. And they, they're they counterproductive. <laughs> Ten nails. I know, right? Okay. When you said celery, I just realized I forgot to order some of your meal. See? It may come with it. I forgot. But with Hooters, I would be surprised if they do charge an extra 50 cent or it's like an upgrade. <laughs> ah, I'm just saying, I ain't mad at them. When they start complaining about their bills, I bring them mad too. Me too. I say something like, girl, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm glad you said that. As soon as I'm done with your meals, I got to go uh, pay this phone bill. What's today's date? <laughs> What's today? The Thursday? What's the date though? Is it the 30th? Is it the 30th yet? Oh, girl, I'm glad you said it because I got to pay this bill. I'm a human like you. Shit. <laughs> we all got bills, but we are not wholesalers. We are li hopefully licensed, we're about to become licensed, but we are artists with a craft, a skill that we spent a lot of time and money on. Man, why do, why do we feel like we need to be wholesalers when it comes to the price? A la carte. A la carte. You will make more money a la carte. Okay? Okay? I'm just saying. Now, here's my other point to this. Hey, Carnival Nails. My salon is inside of a salon suite. It's just myself and another lady that has a nail suite. She says my prices are too low, but I told her, no, I upcharge and have my prices set up a la carte. Right. People look at my price list and think it's cheap. It's not as cheap as you think. But the thing of it is, it's set up where even if you're not getting anything, I'm still getting something decent. Like, okay, a full, a full square set is 40 bucks. But that's nothing because I can finish you and have you out the door in 40 minutes. So yeah, I'll take forty dollars in forty minutes. I sure will because I'm, and they're most likely going to tip forty five dollars in forty minutes. But that same said, I could take it to sixty five dollars, and I could finish that in forty. Uh, I could finish it in an hour and ten minutes. So now I just made sixty dollars in an hour and ten minutes. You see what I'm saying? So twenty five dollars an hour being a wholesaler versus sixty dollars an hour. See. The best way to do it is to have blank blanket prices and you let people build. You let them point to what they like and you come up with something for them and you, then you start building the ticket. So my other point is once you do that, you cannot scale your business. I want you all to think about that because I'm going to go into this just a little bit. If you do that, how are you going to scale your business? How are you going to scale? How can you scale your business? How can you give yourself more money? How can you make more money? How can you build a ticket if you put everything into one price? How do you build a ticket? You can't. You can't. See, the thing that people don't understand, you have to have a way to scale your business. Every business does this. Everybody has a way to scale. Even McDonald's. Go back to McDonald's. They have the burger. They have the fries. But then they have to, they can't just say, we're going to give you a burger, fry, a dessert, or this and that, this for the low price of $4.99. If they offer everything that they offer in one lump sum price, where would they go? They would have to start selling shoes or something. You get what I'm saying? So with that base price, a person can come in and say, I love your work. I've been watching you for a while, but I don't wear all that design stuff. So I'm just going to do like, you know, a little short set or whatever. And I just like, you know, just a plain color. And you'd be like, oh, okay. And then you could be like, you don't want anything. Like, it, you know, a little touch is fine. You know, you should try it. There's nothing. I can, I, you know, I can, um, you know, I could keep it toned down. But you're building the ticket. So now I'm taking that 40, that $40 little simple 40-minute set. And I could throw, let's just say, a glitter press 
For a person who never even had designs, they're going to be so wowed by a simple glitter press. You can do an iridescent glitter press on top of any color and it changes it and put it on the pinky finger or the ring finger. Now you just took that up to how much? You took it up $5. But if you keep doing that throughout the week or over time, you'll notice that you gave yourself a raise. Or you'll notice that that one little change for those plain people now covers your cell phone bill. Believe it or not, little things like that, those little tweaks in that ability to do so can cover a bill. We got to break our numbers down. So not doing that is keeping yourself in a box. Keeping yourself in a box. And even like this time right now, everything has gone up. Alcohol went from $8 to $25 a darn gallon. But you have clientele who's used to being in this tight little box, getting the most for the, for the least. So how do you increase your prices like that? You can only just go up maybe a few dollars for that. But your prices went up so high, you just... You just put yourself in a position where you can't shift. You can't really shift out of it. And it's just it's just not a good thing. It's just not a good thing. Now, I'm going to read some comments, and I'm, I'm just going to give you another example of how you can be in a box that you don't think is a, a big deal, but it can be. Hi. I said hi already. Hi. She's coming from a discount salon. Okay. Who does do charge for celery and carrots? See, I wasn't sure. I just know when I go. I expect to see this bill with all these little stupid little charges on it for every little thing. But when I go, I know what I'm getting. And I'm, I want it so bad. I'll just get, I still get what I want. That's what I, that's what I'm telling you. All. When it comes to certain things, people don't care. When it comes to food and people, foodies, foodies don't care about how much food costs. If they have a taste for something, they're going to pay for it. When it comes to hair and nails, it don't matter how broke the woman is. She's going to get the money to pay it. Okay. I'm just saying. Y'all know that. We all live in here. Most of us. We have 32 suites. Yeah. And it's only two of you on. It, yeah. I think that's right. But yeah. While in the salon, I failed to upcharge people properly. I was in there doing $70 to $90 sets for under $60. Womp, womp, womp. I charged one lady $60 and she went to cussing like crazy. <sighs> that's what happens. We got to be aware of how we're putting it out there because once you're out there and you try to budge, you switch up something, it's a problem. I I explained why the cost was 60 and she was just so rowdy. My boss offered her a $20 discount. I was pissed. I was on 50-50. And that's what I'm saying. If you do that and then you got to take in your other costs, you're not taking all that money home. So, man, it's, it's crazy out here. It's a lot to think about. You said, I spent one and a half hours on her nails and only made 20 bucks. So how much did you really make under minimum wage? So Lauren said, Lauren is live, y'all. I can't stand freestyle folks. Rather do something simple and concise. Y'all start doing all that freestyle set prank stuff. That can get real out of control real easy. Because when you start saying stuff like freestyle set for $75 um, this week, choose three colors, you get this much, then people are going to start pulling out pictures and arguing and going back and forth with you on what that means. And then when you really look at it, you be like, Dad, that I bet you such and such would have charged $130 for all that. But technically, because I set myself up this way, I had to get do all that work for that amount. Don't. I'm just saying. I'm just... Who, who, who told y'all, who told Neil Tex to start doing this? This well, this just came out of nowhere in the past, like, two years. Who, where did this come from? It's unnecessary. It's really unnecessary. It's okay to try here, there, maybe in the winter if you want to try something new. But, like, if that's the way you do things, like, overworking yourself. Right, Lauren? God removed me from the shop with the pandemic. <laughs> You said if I would have finally made $20, I would have been hot. It happened. Yeah, we got to do better. Can't let the clients dictate your crap and your prices. Exactly. Exactly. You can't do it. Are you, are you scared that no one will come? No, they're going to come. They're going to come. So let me go back. I digress. Now, on the other hand, I'm going to do some comparison here. I wish I had a set pulled up here that we could just, let's see. 
That's not a good one. I think I took the real extravagant ones down because they were taking up space. But let's just say it's this. Remember this set we had? It was like, we. it was like, what's your price? I think it's this one. Here it is. Here it is. So what's your price? You don't need me. What is your price for this set right here? Remember, everybody, remember the game we played? Everyone started putting up their, their prices, right? Or what they were charged. We're going to do that again today. We're going to do that again today. So tell me, how much would you charge for this particular set of nails? I'm just going to step off camera for one second, give you 30 seconds. Just look at it. Just look at it because this is the type of set that people are offering like a freestyle type of set for $60 to $75. Okay, so I'm going to take this picture down, but I knew I had something that was a little zhuzhed up. And those are the type of sets that people are literally doing the absolute most and charging this flat rate. Do you see the difference? See, Lauren said $260. And I know Lauren charges because you really could get up there in, the, in that butt if you wanted to like that. $125, $126 to $140, $140, $120. Yes, yes, 200. People don't even understand. Why are you trying to, why are you trying to satisfy people that's, that's, that's has champagne taste with a, um, you know, a, a, a Moscato budget? We ain't going to say a beer budget. They got a Moscato budget. They got a Moscato budget. Not quite, you know, beer or MD 2020, but it damn sure ain't no champagne budget. So why are we sitting up here marketing all of this champagne taste at, at Moscato prices, okay? You let them build the ticket to what they can afford. They got to build their ticket and pick out what they can afford up to their, Mos their Moscato budget. I, I try to say it different ways, honey, because I'm so serious. Because nail techs who've been in this and they, they realize their talent, they realize their worth, they realize their worth, this is what they're charging. And when we did that exercise that day, I want to say when, it, when we broke it down, we broke it down. It came up to about 160, 180, close to 200 with the tip, if I remember correctly. Somebody have to pull up that old video to um, 180, see? To, uh, I forgot the number. But yeah. So let's keep going with this. That one set, we're going to say that takes three hours for a lot of people to do. It's nothing wrong with that if you're going to do quality, quality work. It could take over definitely over two hours to do, um, just depending on the nail bed, the, the condition of the cuticles, like how detailed are you getting, how crisp are you making it, you know, like how many color variations you put in there, you know, like how big are these stones you're putting on. It could easily go towards three hours. Now, we're going to use 180. If you say 180, you're making $60 an hour. So now you don't feel too bad about taking three hours to do it. But if you sat there and you gave a wholesale price on all this type of stuff and you did three hours on this, because this that, that was definitely a three hour set, you just made minimum wage when it's, you know, 
You see what I'm saying? It's such a huge difference. You literally are shorting yourself $40, 40 dang on dollars minimum an hour if you are putting out that quality of work. If you can do that quality of work, you are shorting yourself around $30 to $40 or more an hour because you don't realize your work and you're too busy worried that you won't have any clients. So you start catering to any and everybody. That is one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of nail techs are making. These newer nail techs, with their marketing tactics, I don't understand. It's counterproductive and it's wearing them out prematurely. And that's why I said I had to ask the question, who told nail techs to start doing this hair? Who? <laughs> Clients are used to getting mistreated. They complain when we play. Clients are so used to getting mistreated, they complain when my full set started 40, gel 15. Includes top coat, one color on top of the enhancements. Everything else starts $5 up and they, they still want to complain. I politely tell them, I only use quality products and take my time to give them a great service. They give me a headache. See, and people will start giving you a headache. But you may have to switch up how you're doing things, how you're positioning yourself. You know, all that, you know, it's all that type of stuff to get you started it's in the 30 day challenge. But I'm not even going to market because I always market. And if you watch my channel, you already know about it. But I'm just showing you different angles on why you is so important to make sure that you are properly branding yourself and attracting the right people. If you are just following what you see other people doing, you're going to most of these people in five years, they're going to be so burnt out. They're going to hate doing nails because they're doing way too much for too little. You have to pace yourself in this industry. Anything you do, you have to pace yourself. That's why a lot of people go in, come out, go in, come out. They just go get a whole nother career altogether because they were great. They had clients, but they let them clients burn and run them into the ground for pennies. Don't do that. Wholesaling they darn talent. Stop wholesaling your talent. <laughs> and that's funny because I don't even charge for jail. And that's why I tell I've had, when I've gotten into people, I'm like, you think this is something you don't even know. I know plenty of nail techs that charge just for the gel polish. And I don't. I could. What I'm saying is I could be charged way more than I do. But my prices are fair enough for me. And people are still going to complain. Let them go find somebody else. I keep saying that so much. And some of, some of my clients might get a little whatever. If, 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 you, if it ain't you, then it ain't you. <laughs> you would know if it's you. If it ain't a good fit, it ain't a good fit. But I, I'm not going to sit there and short myself. Bending, you know, bending, bending, bending for everybody. I can't do it. Lauren, oh, ask Lauren a question. You said, I think only the unlicensed ones give out $200 plus nails for under $100. you would be surprised. But I'm just saying, I don't think a lot of people are thinking that much on it. They, they're not calculating. They feel like they're doing great because they're busy. Yeah, you're going to stay busy, but you're going to be burnt out. And have carpal tunnel in five years. <laughs> why, why, why work that hard? I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. After working in the salon, I want to do too little for too. You want to do too little for too much. <laughs> yeah, you gonna you go learn today. You gotta learn today. You better be charged by length. You better be charging a base price, and then everything else changes the price. Even cutting down the nails. All of that changes the price. It changes the price. Why do we feel like we got a wholesale? You ain't never seen no darn discount salon say you get all this stuff for a low, low price of this. You don't. They 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 suck you in with a low base price, and then they they start handing what they start doing now. They in recent years they have started doing what handing you a fancy menu. Excuse me. Do they do they or do they not hand you a fancy menu now? Some laminated thick laminated menu with the different pedicures and stuff on there because they try to upgrade you too, even further because they tired of making them little pennies, even for the base, because a lot of them don't want to take time to learn design. So they're like, hmm, what can we do to scale our business? What can we do to make more money? So they started scaling the, um, the pedicures a lot. They're pushing them pedicures. As soon as you sit down in that chair, what they do, hand you that little thick, thick ass laminated um, board telling you about all the pedicures. You don't want this? It's nice. This nice is good for you. It's fully a cube. Don't move on this in your feet. Your feet dry. You know, I'm just saying, sorry, but not sorry is the truth. The salon taught me to charge my worth and for all of my supplies. Yes. And we forget about things like our equipment. Drills go out. 
constantly buying fouls. And you need to have, you need to be making money. That's just, that's just it. That's just all. How many people do you think would keep going to work if the job said, um, we're just going to pay, we just pay everybody, we just pay everybody $500 a week. It don't matter what you do. We just give you $500 a week and you just have to stay here until the work get done. Who will work a job like that? Who works jobs like that? Because people do. People who work jobs like that are usually in a hard place in life. And, and they, you know, it's just like they're doing something under the table. Don't skilled workers or people with degrees and careers and stuff do not go to no damn job that say, oh, you're just going to work this many hours. Well, you know, they do. But I mean, like the salary is high. I'm saying that's that's called being a salary employee. But I'm saying like for five hundred dollars a week, you just got to stay here until it gets done and do whatever needs to be done. No. So why are we doing that? In a sense, this is what we're doing from so many different angles. This is what we are doing. So that was really I don't have to talk you all to death, but I really want to know who told nail techs to start doing this. And if you are new nail tech, try it a little bit to get your skills up and to practice on real people to get your feet wet. But I definitely do not, when I tell you, I definitely do not recommend this to be. No, I definitely do not recommend this to be the way you market your business and set up your business. It is not the way. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm going to read these, then I'm going to move on to the announcement. My place wasn't on the fancy price stuff because of our location, but they sure did give me all the beer money customers with champagne taste. I give one total, and my boss gave me a cheaper one. Man, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. You're right. The coronavirus blessed you by taking you out of there. It's because they operating a hustle and not a business yeah a lot of people just throwing out prices whatever is grabbing the, the masses that's like oh it's working i'm killing it i'm killing it yeah you're killing it all right you're killing your darn self you're killing your hands and your back that's what you're doing a lot of people they really broke their numbers down they ain't making the money they think they not and, and and here's another thing i'm busy all the time i'm busy every day i work six days a week i work 14 hours a day do the damn math do the math 14 times six and then divide about how much you made this week you're not making the money you make Let's do the math. <laughs> I don't know what the math is. I just want to see. I'm just curious. Because people love to brag like that. And I'm like, mm -mm. that's not where it's at. You can't, and it's not sustainable. That's another thing. It's not sustainable. So we're going to say $14. People love to say, I work 14 hours a day. I work six days a week. I have to, you know, take a break. You work at 84 damn hours a week. <laughs> I make $1,500 a week. I easily make $1,500 a week because if you charge a $60, $70 per person, that's why you're working 14 hour days. <laughs> I make $1,500 a week. So $1,500 divided by 84 is how much? Like I, how do I know what I'm talking about? Like I said, $17 an hour. Didn't I say that? And this is not even calculating any, um, any supplies or anything. I know what I'm talking about. We don't even take it up and say, I made $2,000. I make two G's a week. I make two G's a week. So they, I be in there from sun up to sun down. I'm, I'm booked. I'm packed. Matter of fact, my books is three months out. Yeah, but you're doing these wholesale sets. So let's go back to this 84, $2,000 a week, right? Divided by the 84 hours you work in a week. Now you make $23 an hour. That's not calculating any booth rent, any commission, any supplies or anything. You only make it $23 an hour. I want you all to get this. The, the bragging that people are doing to me as an as a industry professional, as a businesswoman, I'm like, you, that is not anything to brag about. What it says to me is that you don't know how to calculate your business expenses, your overhead. You don't know how to manage your time and your money in this business. You don't know how to manage your business. You're mismanaging your business. You should not be working 84 hours a week. But $2,000 sound good to some people. I just did the math for you. If you're working that much, you're in the salon that much, you are not making money like you think. You're working yourself into the ground. 
Stay busy if it make you feel good. Stay busy if you got a big Instagram. Stay busy. What you're going to do, you're going to stay tired. And it's not sustainable. And you're going to get tired. You're going to get burnt out. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. Nobody can sustain working that many damn hours a week. So stop wholesaling. For anybody who's out there wholesaling, stop wholesaling. Because this is what you're doing. If you're young, you can do it. But you can't do it that long. Yes, I had hustling and not a business. I just ran the numbers. And didn't they match up to the numbers I said earlier? Because I know it. what I'm saying is the truth. But people don't like looking at the truth. People don't like real conversation. They like fluffy conversation. And that is not me. That's why I ain't for everybody. Because I don't talk to make people happy. I talk to learn and to grow and to listen to others and exchange ideas that can make us better for the long haul. I don't say what people want to hear. I say what we, what we all need to hear, what we need to be discussing. And that's a real life. A lot of people don't like me in real life, I think, because I just keep it too real for them. I, 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 don't, I ain't part of the get along gang. I don't have to get along. I don't have to be a part of the crowd. I, I do need to get this bag, though. <laughs> Even CEOs don't work 48 hours a week for pennies, but people love bragging like that. And I know just from being in this industry forever that there were there are many hairstylists. Um, bar, I don't know about the barbers, but Maybe some barbers, nail techs that love to sit up and talk about how much they work and how much they make. And if you did the math, what just what next time somebody say something like that, so you just pull out your phone and calculate it. They don't point it out to them because they're gonna get pissed at you because it's gonna be the truth, and they're gonna say you a hater. They're gonna I, people always like to say you a hater when you point something out to them that make total sense. They don't want to hear it, so they just instantly call you a hater. That's like the scapegoat way of not facing reality. Don't let it be you working no damn eighty four hours a week. Nowhere near, nowhere near that, unless it's like, I guess, prom season or some, you know, high, high traffic season. Other than that, that should not be your normal day. <laughs> I mean, week. I need to make no less than 50 an hour, period. Bloop. She's talking to me, y'all. <laughs> <We just, laughs> why do you put yourself out there? No, it just, it just made me think like this would be a great topic. It would be a great topic because... I have been seeing this online. I have been seeing this online and it's like, oh no, we got to discuss this. I don't know why I haven't never brought it up. She's talking to me, y'all. We just talked about this on our call. I'm going to do better, y'all, working on my booking site ASAP. You put yourself out there, girl. You don't have to do that. But yeah, she's excellent, y'all. Kamaria's nails is excellent. She does great work. Great work. I work better than man. I ain't going to lie because you know why I don't do all that stuff. I can, but I don't want to, and I don't even try to attract it. <laughs> yes. And speaking of, I got to fix my book inside because I think it's outdated because I have not been working. And I got to go. That's one of the things I got to do this weekend. I got to update it, I think. I don't know. Um, yes, wild and uncut in the most humblest way. Thanks, Chicago. I'm sorry, y'all. When I y'all know when I get the rent, I get to go after it. You better, you better get it together. Thank you. I appreciate your channel so much. I, and I appreciate y'all seriously. Like, wait till I move and I set up my studio that's always there. I say this every video, but you're going to see everything I'm talking about come to, to fruition. I will be on this camera in y'all face every day. I, when I could just walk into a room and hit the go button. But right now, that's not the case. It made so much sense when you broke down the base price explanation. Yes. And remember, now that she said it, and I'm going to say it. I pointed to one of her sets and I told her how much I would charge. And she was charging less than I would charge. And I'm just like, no, you can be getting this much. You see how I, I broke it out? And to be honest with you, you can even scale it even more. So like the set we talked about, if you said, oh, that's, let's just say that set had four bling nails on it, four partial bling nails, because full and partial is different. And also if you start putting 3D stones, that's another level of pricing. But if it had four bling nails, see, you could even scale it further because the person can point to a set that they liked on your page and say, but I want six bling nails. You get what I'm saying? So you got to be able to scale it, scale it, scale it. Like it's best to start from baseline. Hey, Nails by Deborah Lynn. Nails by Deborah Lynn has been a little missing a little bit too. How are you? You said come back to Atlanta. Y'all gave me COVID. <laughs> came as soon as i got there i was like oh this is a mistake i knew it but that's why i think i'm pretty sure they're the airport i'm not sure it was one but 
That's how I caught COVID. And I was going to Atlanta. I'm coming back though. I'll be back really soon. So I think that's all I have to say about this. Who told me on Texas to start doing this? My personal recommendation is don't do that. Don't do it unless it's like you're new or you just want to practice something, kind of get your skill on something. Like when Ombre first came out, a lot of people had problems with Ombre. So if you want to do something like that, just to really keep doing it back to back, you can run something like that and say, you know, do that wholesale pricing thing. Like Ombre sets $50 this month. You can do that just to make yourself really good at it. But as a business model, it's a no for me. Just saying. So I think I'm going to move on and I'm going to give you all a second and then I'm going to come back with a big announcement. It's a fun announcement. I cannot wait to tell you. Stay tuned. Grab your stuff. Grab your snacks and stuff. Now available at www.chicagobeautysource.com. Again, that's www.chicagobeautysource.com. Okay, so before I tell you the new thing we're going to be doing, I'm just going to read these comments. You see, I'm smart about this nail life. I've listened to her several times. Well, thank you. But I'm going to tell you something. It's not really that I'm smart. It's just I've been through it all. <laughs> and anybody who knows me will tell you, I've been up in this business. I've been down in this business. And everywhere imaginable, salon owner, just corporate spa, uh, mobile services, celebrities, anything you could think of, I've had my hands on in this business and um, in different states as well. So I just see it from so many different angles. And the business is bigger than it's ever been, but it's worse than it's ever been at the same time because it's so saturated with people who are talented and don't realize it and people who are looking for a quick buck and don't respect it and i'm here to try to new try to neutralize some of that by putting out information that's going to put real quality uh business-minded nail techs or beauty professionals back out into the field because the the more more of a bad rep we get going to make it harder and harder and harder for you to make this a career making great money. So I'm, I'm trying to do my part to make sure that we get some people out there that's going to help neutralize some of the bad apples that's out there because there are bad apples. <laughs> great info. Good. There was a set on Facebook, a girl posted that 
She charged $60 for overlay, gel polish, didn't charge for the art on four nails. Everybody jumped on her. She charged less than I would have based on our prices. Yeah, they jumped on her. Of course. But again, you want everybody or you want the people that's a good fit? Because you could be over here. Sometimes slow and steady wins the race. It always does. Slow and steady wins the race. Patience is key. You could take your time and build a good clientele that sees your worth, or you can go after today money, burn yourself out, run through supplies, working hard, not really seeing the money. In the end, you will be better off than that person, and that person will kind of be wishing they didn't do that after so long. Because you get the people in your chair, it's hard to go up. You start too low, it's hard to get a ghost. You can only add a little bit on with those people. You go up five hours a year on the people that will start going off on you. Do you want those people? No. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's why I don't really watch other people too much. I see things, but I don't look. I, I take things with a grain of salt. I see nail techs with 100,000 100, followers, 80,000 followers. But then I also know that that person is on Section 8 and they don't even pay their own rent or anything. So, yeah, you could go ahead and you can flash and flex all this designer stuff and put this brand out here like you're making all this money. But in real life, you're not. So you can't take everything you see on the Internet like for for like law, you know, and then you got the more humble nail tech who page may look a little plain to you. and They, they don't have that many followers. But that person has a very steady clientele they've been doing for years and years and years. Those clients um, bring them extravagant gifts. Those clients tip very well. Those clients do do all sorts of things for their nail tech. They have formed relationships with their nail techs. They do stuff for each other's kids. That is a career. That's a career relationship. You want career relationships with people. That's how you, you, you build and you start getting your homes and your, your cars and your houses and the life you want because you have built a relationship and you can you can depend on this clientele. You can depend on this income. And you're not working yourself to the bone. So I'm just saying. You bet. <laughs> okay. Lauren, what does that mean? You said, hey, I'm back. I was OTP. Does that mean you were on the potty? Oh, on the phone. <laughs> I've done the math before, but I was making $7 an hour. <laughs> Y'all got me spitting across the room. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't, precious, don't you disappear on me again. I found you. I was making seven dollars an hour working weekends only at the salon. <laughs> My nine to five pays me handsomely, so it just wasn't worth it. But I'm glad I worked there because you learned a lot. Yeah, but when you start really breaking down numbers on some of the stuff that we're doing, you'll be like, "Whoa!" You you you'll be mad like that. And then if you got a whole bunch of people that don't want to pay you more, what you gonna do? You gotta be arguing, and, and it's gonna be like pulling teeth. Trying to get them to, to come up to where you want to be. Eh. Okay. So here we go. I have a new idea. Tell me what you think because I want to start this weekend. Lauren, what is that? What is that, child? Y'all, I don't have my glasses. I think that's a, a bell. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I need glasses now. I don't even have more. I'm not going nowhere. You kept telling me I was going to learn a lot, and I did. Look. Look. So, this is what it is. You guys, I'm going to give you a on the phone. That's what I thought. You know, I'm, I'm an old lady. Okay, so <laughs> here it is. The moment you all have been waiting for. What is it? We are going to be doing this starting this weekend. That's right. We're going to start playing bingo, baby. <laughs> I used to love bingo and I made a lot of money playing bingo. And it hit me last night, I think, because I couldn't sleep. 
I was, you know, just up. And I was like, we need to play bingo. And it just hit me. And I started looking and I found a way for us to play bingo. Everybody all across the world, we can play bingo together. What do you all think about that idea? How it will go is <sighs> you would purchase your cards. You would purchase your cards and we would start the game out. And it's so many games, depending on how many players we have, the least amount of games that we'll do is three games. And so you will play. If you get bingo, you get the prize for that game. So the prize can be anywhere from, it can be anywhere from, like, it's some things that I have a lot of. Like, I have a lot of acrylic and stuff. Just good. It's going to be good stuff because I'm trying to clear out stuff before I move. I don't, I don't, I don't want to take too much with me. But it's gonna be it's gonna be nail supplies, and so it can be it could even be this. This is the the zoins the zoins the zoins the zoins smock. So it could even be this. It could be whatever, and it'll be depending. It depends on how many people participate in the games. I want to do this like weekly or every other week, and I you this will be a real freaking bingo game. It's gonna be it's called. Nail boss bingo. So we're gonna be doing nail boss bingo. I'm gonna see how it goes this week. And you you would purchase your cards, they will be emailed to you, and then you pull it up. You can do it on your phone, you can do it on the computer, and you literally can tap. So if I say B19, you can tap on your phone, B19, whatever. And if you win, you gotta type in bingo. You gotta type in bingo. Make sure you got a good connection, and you would just type in bingo real quick. Bingo. So you see, I put bingo. So I'm going to say Chicago, Chicago. Um, where did it go? Oh, <laughs> so I say Chicago says she got bingo. So Chicago, give me the number on your card. And then Chicago will type in. You look at the top of that card that won bingo. You'll say six, seven, three, nine. And you just type that in. Six, seven, six, seven, three, nine. So what I can do, I can literally pull it up on my phone into the software and say 6739. It's going to tell me whether or not you bingo. And it's all the software that tells me what numbers to call out to you. And once you bingo, you give me the number at the top of your card, which comes from this software. And I'm going to put in the system. And if you bingo, then you win whatever prize it is for the game. And the, the prizes are going to be nice prizes. It's going to be meal supplies, stuff you need. You never know. Um... Like we're gonna do a cover all as well. So a cover all is meaning you have it means you have to cover every chip. That's a longer game. That's usually at the end. That's always at the end. The cover alls are gonna be bigger prizes. So a cover all, depending on how many people participate that week or whatever, the cover all could be a drip. The cover all could be a smock and a whole acrylic system worth $150. The cover all just depends on how many people get into the pot. But I just thought that this is a fun way. To, to kind of shake things up. People don't have anywhere to go. So we can do some virtual bingo. So what do you all think? Because I want to start it this week. I want to start it like, it's going to be a snowstorm. I was going to leave out, but I'm not leaving out. So I want to start it Sunday. I want to start it Sunday. So you said, man, it's going to be snow. I will be clearing the streets from my main job. That sucks. I want to play. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about starting this Sunday. Um, so what would happen is this. Let's see. I want to see what people are saying about this. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to discuss meal brands that started for pros and went retail. I don't, who is that? Because I use the same old stuff forever. Like I don't switch up. So you would have to inbox me that information for me to look into it. Okay. Bingo is cool. Fresh as me said, I'm over here reading bingo. What, how, are you precious? Oh my God, you never been to Hooters and you never played bingo? I, I gotta come visit you and take you out for a night on the town. I'm down, <laughs> keeping the Chicago Casino. Yes, it's called Nail Boss Bingo. <laughs> bingo, it's so fun. Since I'm old, can we play before 11 p.m.? I work, so after 6 p.m., oh my God. I was thinking we'd probably do it about 6.37 Sunday, maybe even earlier, because you never know. People might want to keep going with it. 
I was thinking about starting it out with three games. That's a cute idea. Yeah. Love it. It's fun, too. Bingo is fun. I used to play it all the time for money, and I've won big pots, like $1,000. Your crimps look pretty, by the way. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so bingo is really easy. It's just a card, and I will call out a number, and it's B-I-N-G-O. And it's it, you could do it different ways, but this one is number one through 75. So it's 75. You know, one, the numbers one through 75 and B-I-N-G-O. If I say B-12, you're going to look under the Bs and see if you have a 12. And you're just trying to get five across, five this way, five that way. There's five in a row some type of way. If you get five in a row some type of way, you just type in bingo. And then you win that prize. And then the coverall, you have to cover everything. But I would explain each game, like what type of game is it a regular game or is it a coverall game. It's different ways to play. We just do regular and the coverall. The coverall will be a bigger prize than the regular games. So Precious Me said, I want to play. It's so easy. Um, man, it's going to, oh, yeah. Dazzle Girl, don't go to work. Just stay here and play bingo. <laughs> Lauren said, I'm down. Okay, so I was just thinking and let's see. What is it? So how this would go is I had it here. It is $20 to play all games. So what will happen is for $20, you will receive four boards. You're going to receive four cards. So four cards. And we're going to play at least three games, at least three games. But I do need at least six people to, to participate, at least six people to participate. And we're going to play up to three games plus a coverall round. So it'll be four chances to win these nail supply packs. And it's fun because you definitely can win. You can definitely, definitely, definitely win. And if it's, you know, we're going to start out with three games and a coverall. So if it's $20 to play, you receive four boards. And you never know, I might, I might increase that to five or six. We'll see. But you would have to literally, if you're doing it on your phone, if I said B1, you will probably have to, you know, swipe through and, and find the Bs or whatever. So that's how it goes. So you would cash out the $20 to dollar sign Chicago. And in the comments, you have to put your correct email address because I will send you the boards to your email address. And I wanted to do this tonight because I'll be doing that all day tomorrow because the game will start Sunday late, late afternoon, late afternoon, late afternoon. And if you want to, if you want to, you can come on screen because I can bring up to 10 people on the screen. So while it's like, it's almost like we're in a bingo hall together. So I'm the caller. I'll be off to the side and you all will be like in little boxes and you can just be playing or whatever and everybody can see on screen. So that's how it goes. And if you win, boom, I will send it to you, whatever that package is. So let's see, what does 6739? 6739 was just saying, like, if you won bingo, I would ask you, I have to verify your card. So if I ask you what's the number in the top right-hand corner of that card, I think it's like a four-digit number, and 6739 is that number. I could type it in just to make sure it's valid. It's a real bingo system that anybody in the world can play, too. So even if you're not here in the United States, you can still play. If you win, though, I cannot ship a package all the way internationally. It's just going to be too much. But what you do, the consolation or the alternate prize will be you could pick something digital. So that means that you can get the book digitally, you can get the class digitally, or you can get uh, a 30-minute consultation. So if you win and you're not in the U.S., then you will pick something digital, and that will be your prize. So I just want to get your thoughts on bingo. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Would you all like to start that this Sunday? And actually, just to get it started, what we're going to do is we're going to make that just just do 15. Well, just to get it started, just to see how it goes, because, it you know, just to get people in front of people to see how it all plays out. We're going to do $15. So $15, you're going to get your boards emailed to you and you can play to win these boxes. And I want this to be an ongoing thing because I think it'll be fun once you once a lot of people start participating and then I can start increasing the boxes like, you know, wow, you get all this, you get a nail drill, a, a LED light, all this, and you only pay $20 to enter this game. 
because the bingo game can go on for a minute. It's not a five minute thing. So we, the more people participate, the more games we can play for more prizes. So what are your thoughts? Good, good question. Will you have to pay for shipping the prize if you win? No, shipping is included. I never charge people for shipping anything. Anything you get from me, shipping is free. Any Everything on Chicago Beauty Source is free shipping. I'm glad you said that because I don't like dealing with shipping. <laughs> I don't like dealing with that. It gets too complicated. So I always just do everything. Everything I do is free shipping. So no, of course, it's just really like you pay. If you win, you get it. So I'm starting it out at $15 just to get people kind of like acclimated to, you know, how it goes and what it's all about and giving people a chance to see and just to kind of get, you know, the operation of things going. So if you are interested, I do need six people to participate. If I don't get at least six people, I might cancel it or move it out a day and come back and just try to get more participants. But really, I need six people to kind of get this software going. Um... And I'm going to be the caller. Yeah, so this is really not a money-making thing for me, per se. It's really just the cost of, like you said, shipping stuff to you and, um, yeah, putting it all together. You said love bingo. They don't know bingo is fun, especially because, shoot, you, especially when you one away, one away, and it's like, you just keep going. You're like, I-17, I-17, and I'll be like, I 26 oh, and then somebody else will go bingo and they won it. It's like you were right there. You, yeah, yeah. I'm down. We all nail sisters. Okay. You said I want to play. Hopefully, I'm done with my client Sunday in time. Awesome, Lauren. Okay, well, cool. So this is what you do. You just again just cash out. Where is it? Where is it? Make it $15. 15, 15. I said 20, but 15 to play. Make sure you add your email in the comments. Put your email address in the comments because that's how you get your electronic boards, okay? And that was the big announcement that we're going to start playing bingo. Nobody else is doing this online. No one, no one else, no one else, no one. Just something that popped in my head. Okay, so you do that. I send you the boards. They'll come tomorrow. I have to email them to you, and then I will put up a notification on the channel. It's going to be done on YouTube, of course. And we'll do it in the early, late, later in the afternoon. So I don't know. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions from anyone? I always never know exactly what I'm going to talk about. I end up talking forever. Always. Let's see. I am sad I can't commit till Sunday. Oh. Well, you can try to send it. You have to send it to me earlier in the day because once I get it, then I have to go in the system and email you your boards. And then you need to get the boards and make sure you know how to work through them because it, it depends if you're doing it on a tablet, your phone, your laptop. You know, just make sure you know what you're doing. You don't want to get them like 10 minutes before and you can't figure out like how to get the boards or whatever. So where's BRB? Y'all know I am old. Sunday bingo sounds good. <laughs> and Sunday is a, a known bingo day. Sundays and Wednesdays are popular bingo days. Sunday is my birthday. So I got to sit this one time out. Oh, happy birthday. They will not share my birthday plans with me. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. And I might do a Monday. I would say first I was going to do it on Monday because I had to go somewhere Sunday, but it's going to be a snowstorm. So I don't think that's going to happen. What's BRB? Oh, be right back. Oh, I'm so goofy. See? Precious, you're younger than me. <laughs> but um, I think that's it. But whatever day it's going to be, you have a, between now and like tomorrow, I would, if you want to participate, I would appreciate it. I got to think about it. It may be Sunday, it may be Monday. I got to see what the participation is looking like. If it's low, then I might push it out to Monday. And then, <laughs> and then we'll do it then. But it's fun. You do not want to miss out. So, that's it. Only by like a year or two. Yeah. I'm feeling old. I need to have my bifocals right now. <laughs> so I think that is all. I think that's all. But trust me, I got much, much more to come. And I'll keep you posted on what's happening with the bingo 
the bingo signups. Oh my God. Precious Aquarius baby. Yes. Hope you have a great birthday. Yes. And then Lauren, you said don't go. The night is still young. I still, I got to set up this lighting. I need to set up this lighting because I don't like, this looks weird. I need, I need better lighting. I bought better lighting and I haven't set it up. What if it's broken? I need to send it back. So I need to, I need to put it together. I've had it too long. I've had it too long. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And I really appreciate you all. Just think about what I said. Maybe rewind the video until it kind of plays in your head on why you don't want to wholesale your talent all the time. Think about bingo. And then I will catch you all in the next video, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Bye.